Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this Congress of this year. Thank you for what we've learned during the retreat that just passed. Thank you, Lord, for the power for the present hour. And we're praying, O oh Lord, that all through the days and weeks and months of this year, we'll find that the power for the present hour is in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. We're asking, O oh Lord, that during this year, your perfect will will be the very center of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Obedience to your word will be our watchword. We'll not deviate or turn to the right or turn to the left. And will make you the very Lord of our lives and ministry in our local churches and our homes in Jesus' name. Amen. We're praying, Lord, that as you speak to us once again in your word, we'll not be tired of hearing. We will not be dull of hearing. And the spirit of obedience will grant to everyone in the leadership over here in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We can sit down. We're looking at the word of God. Matthew chapter 28. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, verse 19, and verse 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. As we look at what Jesus Christ said after his resurrection, now with that resurrection power in the glorious body that he had, and he looked at the world still to be reached, he came to the disciples and first of all he gave them assurance and certainty as to who he was, as to what he possessed, as to the authority and the power that Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, that he had in sending them out. So first of all, he announced to them that all of heaven backs him up. All of earth backs him up. And that there is no power on earth or in heaven or anywhere that can confront or hinder this glorious majestic power the Lord the Father had given unto him. So he said, all power and in fact all authority to you is given unto me. Not unto any angel. Not unto any created being. Not unto any human being. Not unto any friend. Any, any. But all power is given unto Christ. Christ the builder of the church. And Christ the Lord of the church. And Christ the head of the church. All power is given unto me. And then he says, go ye therefore because power resides in him because power dwells in our master in our king in our lord he says because of that go and then what are you going to do and teach all nations literally all communities literally all tribes literally all ethnic groups teach everyone what are you teaching them you are teaching them the gospel you're bringing to them the glad news. You're bringing to them this word and this message of salvation. And it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And it says, teaching them all things, teaching them to observe all things. It's telling us that, you know, the danger is there in the world. That there are people that will pick and choose they'll set this aside they'll say this is what we're interested in that's what i'm interested in and jesus knew that he knew that the days will come when leaders of churches ministers of churches and priests in churches and fathers in churches and mothers in churches will say all this is no more important they'll say wait a minute this 24th century they'll say wait this modern time and this new time and modern time how can we still teach this and this and that but jesus christ said teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you it says look at my word put it down record it down and then hand it over to the people that will follow everything i've commanded teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i've commanded you and it says on that condition on that basis in faithfulness to that word, you are faithful to that word. It says, Lo, behold, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Telling us that we are to keep on evangelizing till the end of the world. 
keep on baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost until the end of the world and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded until the end of the world. And it says, I'm with you. You'll experience my presence. You'll experience my power as to teach faithfully everything I've commanded. And that presence and power of the Lord and provision of the Lord will continue with you till the end of the age. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading there from verse 15. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hear the Lord Jesus Christ saying the same thing. But they're saying it another way. So that if you missed an aspect of his commandment, you missed an aspect of his commission on the other side, then on this side you'll be able to get everything he says. Go. That means don't sit down but go don't settle down but go have you noticed how denominations settle down have you noticed how senior pastors settle down the higher they go the cooler they become and then they just settle they say we started this thing how long now about five years ago 10 years ago 20 years ago 30 years ago it's time to settle uh, have you noticed how the people of the world they come into the church and they're asking us questions you people are you going to walk your leaders and your ministers to death don't they retire don't they sit down do they keep on they go on they go every time they are already 60, they are already 70, they are already getting to 80. When are they going to settle down? Well, we are following the words of Jesus. He said, go ye into all the world. You are still to find in the Bible any of the ministers starting from the time of Moses and Joshua and then Caleb and David. And you are still to find in the Bible from the time of Elijah, the time of Elisha. You are still to find in the Bible and the time of Peter and Paul and the Lord Jesus Christ himself. When they retired, you will not find that. They just went on the go, on the go, every time. In fact, we are told about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master and Savior that while he was talking to the people behold he was lifted up he kept on instructing them and teaching them and he kept on showing them the way the way they should go until he was taken to heaven that's the perfect example for every minister for every preacher for every pastor for every overseer and he said go i was still going i said we're still going and he said go into all the world some of our parts of the world will be peaceful some parts of the world will be very dangerous some parts of the world will be kind of unpredictable but he said whatever the condition of any part of the world is unpredictable or painful or persecuting or peaceful whatever go ye into all the world and preach don't go there and trade you can trade if you want to but preach don't just go there because we are going to school you can go to school if you want but preach don't just go there and you know, mix with the people i want to relocate i want to go to this other place don't just go and relocate preach you know if we find many people traveling today it's like almost anywhere you go in the world you're going to find a nigerian there i've never been to any place in this world where there's nothing nigerian nigerians are going they're going they're going the only thing is that they're not just going to preach they're going for a lot of things and the lord is saying the lord gave the commission he said yes you can go but when you go there is one thing to do and that is to be your watchword that's to be your heart that's to be your passion he said go ye into all the world and do what tell me out loud tell me with all your heart and preach the gospel to every creature he said every creature that means every tribe to that means everyone to anywhere everywhere you preach to everyone and this is the great commission and right now you are going to find that the church at large i pray it will not happen to deeper life you know the church at large is like you know uh, they, they're not doing that anymore they, uh, they go in and they're getting involved with this and getting involved with that and getting involved with that and the real thing the central theme and the focus the very nucleus of the commission of the commandments of the lord they have set aside but the lord is saying it is still valid for today it's still demanded today and it says go ye and preach the gospel to every creature it says in verse 16 he that be Believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be what? 
Now, uh, you know, sometimes we get worried unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. You know, I'm preaching and then I'm wondering, you see, believing, not worry about that, just preach. I'm, I'm preaching. Is that person paying attention? Not worry about that. Just preach. I'm preaching. Does that one accept everything I'm saying? Don't worry about whether they accept or not. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not will make me sad. He that believeth not will belittle me. He that believeth not will hurt me. What does it say? Will be damned. Therefore, whether they will hear Ezekiel, go tell them and make my will and my word known to them. Whether they accept or they don't accept, that's between me and them. But the commission and the commandment the Lord has given us is go and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be, tell me damned and this sign shall follow them that believe this sign shall follow them that believe everybody say follow, follow. you know i've been wondering you know, somebody was asking me a question he said uh, you know pastor uh, we don't understand that you know you pray and this happens and you pray and that happens and you pray and that happens we don't understand I said, what don't you understand there? He said, because we are your children and we are following after you and we try to do everything the way you try to do it and then we pray and nothing happens. Oh, I said, very easy. I know why something is not happening when you pray. Oh, he said, you know. He said, yes, I know. I said, where do you pray? Oh, he said, of course, you know, I come to my church. I said, how large is the church? You know, why about, uh, you know, at that time when he was talking to me, there might be about uh, 500 or so, and I preach and preach and preach, and I pray. I said, any blind people there? Oh, he said, then he looked at me and said, no. I said, in your congregation, any lame person there? Then he said, no. Any deaf and dumb person there? He said, no. I said, you know what I do? I go to the places where the blind are. And there I pray, and blind eyes open. And then I go to the places where the lame people are, and I pray. And the lame people, they rise up and jump up and begin to walk. I go to the places where the problematic people, and the people that have challenges in life, where they are. I don't just go, if I only stay here, I, I, I've been wondering. Anytime, I, you know, my house is over there. Anytime I sit over there, signs never follow me. And sometimes I come outside there and I sit outside there and I see you going up and go see you coming down. Signs never for any time I sit down, I've discovered signs never follow. Anytime I sit down, you know, but it's when I'm on the go. Everybody say on the go. When you go, I was talking to one of our leaders yesterday because I, when I, I was on the go in May of last year, I went to their place. That was my first time in that place. And then I told the people there in Oshakachi, Namibia, and I said, now listen to me. I'm going to mention the name of Jesus. And when I mention that name, something is going to happen. I've never been there. That was my first time. And then I began to pray. And as a child there that was born paralyzed, hands paralyzed, and legs paralyzed. And then as I began to pray, I mentioned the name of Jesus. And Jesus appeared before that girl and said, get up. And then immediately that girl never saw Jesus in her life. Many of us say you've never seen Jesus. It's when you go. It's when you move. And then immediately Jesus said, get up. That girl hands became all right legs became all right she got up and she began to run and then as she began to run one of our overseers our overseer from zambia was with me there ran after her and grabbed her and brought her to the stage and i said pastor yesterday when i was talking to him, her, him i said how is that girl oh the girl is already now born again up and running and still walking everything is all right and it's a part of the church right now what I'm saying is, these signs shall follow. If you don't, if you just sit down there, you know, soaking in the word of God, taking notes and taking notes, you pile up your note like this, and then you're sitting on the rocking chair, and then my note, my Bible, I love the Lord, signs will never follow. But this new year, signs are going to follow. And then the pastor told me yesterday, he said, you know what, there was somebody that came here, he was deaf, he was dumb, he was paralyzed. Think about that. Deaf, dumb, and paralyzed. And the moment I mentioned the name of Jesus, deafness went away. 
Dumbness went away. Paralysis went away. Three miracles in one day. And it is when you go, and that's what the Lord has promised, that as you give yourself to the Lord this year, and you say, I want the presence of the Lord. He says, it is when you go to the place he has sent you, and you do what he has told you to do, these signs shall follow them. They will follow me. I said they will follow me. I begin to, you know, already I'm writing down the places I'm going to go this January and this February. I'm already compiling them. I'll be going there and going there and going there. See, what do you still want to go? Because I want to see some more signs. And then I suit you as you mark it down overseer. And then pastor and preachers, if you don't just stay in one location and you are moving here and here and here and there, the power of God will appear to you. The presence of God will go with you. But if you just stay in that one place, no blind person there, no lame person there, no challenge in that place, and you're just staying in one place, you'll not be able to find the signs. But as father, as children, like children, like father. And then the signs that God has given, I'm going to transfer them to you. And then when you're on the go, you're going to find out the power of the Lord will follow you in Jesus' name. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick. Tell me the rest. And they shall recover. I'm going to read uh, those verses again. Look at verse. Uh, look at verse uh, 17. And this sign shall follow you that believe. In His name, you will cast out devils. You will speak with new tongues. You will take all serpents. If you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. You. Where are you? I said you. You will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they, tell me the rest, they went forth. We're going forth. This new year, we're going forth. Every day of this year, we're going forth and we're doing something everywhere in Jesus' name. And they went forth and, and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them. That's the presence of God. He was with them, partnering with them. He was with them, he was present with them. His power was with them. And it says, walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Tell me what follows now. Amen. We're looking at the word of God today, experiencing the presence of God. Experiencing the presence of God. There are three things we're going to talk about. Number one, the privilege of his promised presence. He has promised it already. And what a great privilege you have that you will be an a person that will experience that presence the pro the privilege of his promised presence number two our purging in his perceived presence when you perceive the presence of the lord is there with you and then you see him you see his glory you see his majesty and you see his power and you see his love the purging that takes place as a result of that number three now the purpose of his perpetual presence perpetually present i will be with you i am with you always until the end of the world the purpose of his perpetual presence number one the privilege of his promised presence we're looking at exodus chapter 33 and i'm reading there to you from verse 12 here moses wanted the presence of god and the lord promised him that was going to give him that presence for a purpose you need to understand the presence of god is not given anyhow to anyone anywhere there is a purpose for which that presence is given and when you come into the very center of the will of god and you want to see that for purpose fulfilled in your life you're going to find that the promised presence will be a privilege for you exodus chapter 33 i'm reading from verse 12 and moses said unto the lord see thou sayest unto me bring up this people and thou hast not let me know 
whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast found grace in my sight. It's talking like a safe person. I know you by name. Because his name had been written in the book of life. The Lord said, only those who have sinned against me will blot out their names out of the book of life which have written. And the name of Moses was in the book of life. He knew it. He said, you told me you know me by name. You also said, I have found grace. By grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. He had come to the Lord. He was a sinner too. Before you know what he did, he even killed somebody. And then he ran away into exile. But but then he knew that his sin will find him out and so he had confessed his sin to the lord he had depended upon the grace the pardoning grace of the lord he had been forgiven and now he knew that the assurance of forgiveness was right there and the lord called him by name the foundation of god standeth sure and let everyone that names the name of christ depart from iniquity this man had had that assurance and if you are born again you have that assurance too you, you've confessed your sins you've turned away from your sin you have believed on the lord jesus christ and the grace of god has made a change in your life and now you say you tell me that you know me by name and you tell me that your presence will go with me he says look at verse 13 now therefore i pray thee if i have found grace in thy sight if i have found grace in thy sight I thought you said Moses that you already find the grace of God. Oh yes, oh yes. Because number one, there is the grace for sonship. Then there's the grace for servanthood, serving the Lord. You come into the kingdom of God by grace, and then you are brought into service by grace. And the grace for sonship that's to live a clean life, a righteous life, that's to overcome temptation, that's to be able to overpower the enemy when he comes to tempt you to do evil. But the grace for service the grace for service that it calls you into service and the grace for sonship that's different now this man moses he needed the grace to be able to lead the children of israel onto the land of promise that's why it says now if i have found grace in thy sight show me now thy way and that i may know that i may know thee that i may know that i may find grace in thy sight and consider that this people this nation is thy people and he said my presence shall go with thee and i will give thee rest give me a good amen, amen. the lord said yes moses i've heard you you got grace for sonship now grace for service and grace to be sustaining grace to be able to endure until the very end that you want to come to that final rest he says my grace will go with you and i will give you rest and the lord is assuring you my brother my sister servants of the living god this year the grace of god will go with you in the time of temptation in a time of trial in a time of confusion in a time of depression in a time of real trouble even in the place where you are you'll find the grace of god God will be sufficient for you in jesus name and you have the privilege of having the presence of god going with you my presence will go with you and i will give you rest when that presence comes to us what's the advantage what's the advantage what's the profit look at genesis chapter 39 genesis chapter 39 i'm reading there from verse 2 and then verse 3 and the lord was with joseph no father there the lord was with joseph no mother there the lord was with joseph his brothers hated him the greater their hatred the greater the grace of god the greater the presence of god the greater the power of god as your days so shall your strength be and the greater the predicament that is suffered the greater the grace and the presence of god was him it was in a strange land like many of us you go to places where that's not the place you were born that's not your country and now the challenges there there are some real situations there and the lord as he was with joseph he will be with you it says and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man you will prosper Amen. and he was in the house of his master the egyptian and his master saw his master saw his master saw that the lord was with him people will see people will hear some things are going to happen in your life that people will say i saw that myself 
I knew that myself. Something new is going to happen in your life in Jesus' name. And his master saw that uh, the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. All, all, all that you do, the Lord will make it to prosper. That's the advantage of, you know, the presence of God being with us. When the presence of God is with you, when the grace of God is multiplied in your life, when the power of God is unceasing in your life, it's just there all the time, all the time. Temptation is there, the grace is there trials are there the grace is there and the presence of god is there every time people are going to see that this year is a different year for you look at verse 21 in verse 21 but the lord was joseph and showed him mercy the lord will show you mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison you know they told lies against him and then the master did not even find out joseph you're not like that tell me your whole side of the story he was not asked at all but when the master heard that this is what this your servant this your slave what he wanted to do with me the master just got angry even when people are angry at you the lord will still be with you when they slander you when they lie against you and then when they go to confine you somewhere in that place of confinement that will be your stepping stone to promotion in jesus name and then we're told that when he got to the prison we're told that even the keeper of the prison still should in favor because the lord was with him look at verse 23 verse 23 talking about this uh, joseph and the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his son because the lord was with him and that which he did the lord made it to prosper can you see your prosperity already it's coming because the presence of the lord will be with you and that's the advantage that's the profit and that's the result that's the reward of the presence of the lord being with us in first samuel chapter 3 first samuel chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 19 for Samuel 3 verse 19 the privilege of his promised presence he has promised he's going to be with us and that he will stay with us and remain with us until the end of the age until the end of the world until the end of our time here on earth he will never leave you he will never forsake you and here are the privileges or so the advantages of so the profit or the reason why the reward of that presence of the lord with us in first samuel chapter 3 verse 19 and samuel grew and the lord was with him and samuel grew as you are growing in the lord the lord will be with you and did and did not and did let none of his words fall to the ground that is the lord protected the words of samuel preserved the words of samuel anything samuel said the lord just confirmed it why because the presence of the lord was with samuel and in the same way the presence of the lord will be with you when you speak the word when you decree a thing this year it will come to pass in jesus name first kings chapter 8 First Kings chapter 8 verse 56 Blessed be the Lord, praise the Lord with me That has given rest unto his people Israel According to all that he promised That he promised there has not failed one word Of all his good promise Which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant The Lord is saying that every promise he has made to you If you didn't get it last year, you are getting it this year of all his good promises that he promised uh, begin to mark them down this year is a year of fulfillment that as he said by the hand of moses as he said by the hand of all these uh, people that wrote by inspiration in the word of god all those promises of a yes and amen in our lives in jesus name verse 57 the lord our god be with us that's all we need that's all we need this is a year from january till december and then from this year to the end of our lives that's all we need well we don't worry about satan about demons about evil spirits about enemies about detractors about persecutors about sickness about whatever all we need is the presence of the lord in the presence of the lord there will be the fullness of joy and your life will be full in jesus name the lord our god be with us as he was with our fathers let him not leave us nor forsake us the lord will do it judges chapter 6 
whatever assignment the Lord is giving us this year, all we need is the presence of the Lord. You know, sometimes God gives you an assignment and it appears like, how will I do that? How will that come to pass? Do they think I am, you know, a giant in the Lord, a giant in faith? How could they tell me to do that? They are overreaching me. They are kind of lifting me above my level. Well, there's no level you will not get to this year. Because you'll be the head, you will not be the tail. And whatever challenges come, if God gives you a challenge, it's because you didn't know he had promoted you. You know, sometimes we don't know that God has done that. When somebody comes to us and tells us something, they say, me? How can that be? It's like, you know, the Lord told Elijah, he said, Elijah, I want you to go to that place in Zarephath. I've commanded the widow woman there to sustain thee. And the old woman did not know anything. And the Lord said, just go. I have commanded her. You know, sometimes the Lord has commanded you to do something. And you didn't know. You didn't know that. And then I come to you as a prophet of God. And I say, hey, come on now. Get up and do this. And say, pastor, let me pray. The Lord has not spoken to me. The Lord has commanded already. And then Elijah came. And while the woman was gathering sticks, Elijah said, hey, woman, can you get me some water to drink there? following what the lord had said i've commanded that widow woman that he she is the one to sustain thee and while she was going said hey please when you are coming please uh, bring here some meal because i've not eaten today and feed me here and the woman did not know could not sense that the commandment of the lord was upon her to do that the point i'm telling you is something above you something beyond you that you don't think that is for you to do and yet the lord said i have commanded that widow woman and she didn't know and then she said man of god i don't have any meal in fact this one i'm cooking now is the very last one once i eat this with my son then we are dead because there's nothing left and the lord and the man of god said go and do as i have said the commandment of the lord is upon you and when you obey that commandment provision will come from on high because that cruise of oil and that container of meal will not dry up until the famine will cease in the land and then she went and did according to the word of the man of god and then multiplication came multiplication is coming uh, don't worry about i didn't know that before i didn't know i was to do that the lord commanded you but you didn't know and i am here to come and tell you here is the commandment of the lord for you as you rise up and do it miracles supernatural things will happen in your life in jesus name until things will change and times in the world will change but you'll be living in the prosperity of the lord i'm coming now to this judges chapter 6 judges chapter 6 verse 15 and 16 and he said unto him oh my lord wherewith shall i save israel behold my family is poor in manasseh and i am the least in my father's house and uh, this is gideon the lord said the lord sent an angel and said go and get this done and he said how can i do that i'm the least i'm the smallest our family is poor and as if that were not enough i'm even the least in this poor family and then verse 16 and the lord said unto him surely i will be with thee that settles the whole matter it says even when you feel poor or you feel incapable when you feel unqualified when you feel you don't have the wherewithal to be able to get this done the lord said i will be with you and then it says and thou shalt smite the midianites as one man you'll have the victory in jesus name i come to point number two now our purging in his perceived presence our purging in his perceived presence we're looking at isa chapter six isaiah chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 1 in the year that king Uzziah died i saw also the lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple here was isaiah now isaiah had been serving the lord just like all of us here without exception brothers and sisters you've been serving the lord as pastors as preachers as ministers as servants of the living god in one capacity or the other and yet you come here now to this place and the lord is going to give you a new commission a new assignment 
And as the Lord gives you, you're not going to draw back and say, but I, I think I've done enough. Please him. Here is Isaiah. Here was Isaiah. Isaiah minister from chapter 1 to chapter 5. But to who did he minister? Just to the nation and to the people of Judah. And a new assignment was about to come. And before that new assignment, there will be a revelation of the presence of the Lord was him. And it was in the year that King Uzziah died that this happened. And he saw the Lord and he saw him seated upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his stream filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. He's saying there's no part of the world you cannot go. My glory is there. You know some people, when the Lord wants them to go to this part of the world, this part of the earth, this part of the continent, and this part of wherever it is, what they're looking at the newspapers. The newspapers are different from the Bible. They're listening to the radio. What you hear from the radio is different from the voice of the angels. Or they're looking at, you know, this is an, on the internet, and this one, what you hear on the internet? All the Google that you, that you see on the internet is not the voice of the angel. Some people, their source of information is only what they find in the valley, what they find in the tunnel of darkness. But it is when you see the revelation of the Lord himself, he says, I'll tell you another thing, the whole earth is full of his glory you're not going to hear that from you know the news they're giving they're casting at this time when the lord gives an assignment and he says this is what you do the place to get your news is on your knees and the place to get the revelation of the place the lord is sending you is on your knees and he says it's the whole earth that is full of my glory and then on the post of the dust moved at the voice of him that cried and the, and the house was filled with smoke then said i tell me who is me he saw the glory of god he saw the majesty of god he saw the exaltation of the lord almighty and he saw all these angels as they bowed down as they worshiped the lord and he cried holy 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 is the lord of hosts and then they said what they saw that the whole earth is full of his glory and then he saw himself how unqualified he was when you have the perception of the presence of the lord you might see your corruption you might see the defilement. You might see some backsliding. You might see some shortcoming. That's not to run away from the Lord. Oh, the Lord is so holy. I'm so unholy. That doesn't mean you are going to run away from the Lord. And the Lord is so high. I'm so low. That doesn't mean that you are going to be driven away from the presence of the Lord. The more you see of His glory, the more you see of His honor, the more you come to the Lord and say, Lord, look at me. I'm not worthy to be in your sight. You can. You are going to do something for me. He said, Whoa to voice me for i am unclean and because i'm a man of unclean leaves and i dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves for mine eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar and he laid it upon my mouth the fire of the lord will come upon your mouth and then inside you the fire will be burning and then you'll be able to tell the gospel be able to preach the gospel boldness and with fire in jesus name he laid it on my mouth and said lo this has touched thy leaves and thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged there's purging here today there's pardon here today there's cleansing here today all the defilement the lord by his fire will purge everything away in jesus name also i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us now that i'm prepared i'm pardoned i'm purged i'm purified i'm sanctified i'm made holy and the lord has put his word is fire in my bones in my heart in my life then said i here am i send me can we say that together here am i send me can you say that again say that again 
when you have the perception of the glory of the Lord and the perception of the presence of the Lord is going to ask whom shall I send and who will go for us and then you're able to say because of the pardon because of the purging and because of the purifying you're able to say here am I send me Job chapter 42 Job chapter 42 I'm reading from verse 1 when you have the presence of the Lord you see the presence of the Lord and you experience that presence of the Lord is going to lead to purging purifying sanctification and holiness job chapter 42 verse 1 then job answered the lord and said i know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge therefore have i uttered that i understood not things too wonderful for me which i knew not here I beseech thee and I will speak I will demand of thee and declare unto me listen to this verse 5 I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear but now mine eye seeth thee he perceived now the presence of the Lord I see you close now when I didn't see you I said a lot of things my friend said a lot of things we argued back and forth they said no you must be a sinner I said no but I'm all right and then as we were arguing like that I said which of you can you know accuse me of anything I even told them you are comforters of no profit but now I stop all that because my eyes now see you. I perceive the presence of the Lord now because of that perception. See what happens in verse 6. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. That's what I'm telling you. That when you really perceive the presence of the Lord, you'll see what needs to be cleansed away from your life. You will see how dirty you are. You will see how defiled you are. You will see how unacceptable in the sight of the Lord you are. And then you'll go to the fountain of the blood of the Lamb. And then the Lord will cleanse you afresh in Jesus' name. Job chapter 34. And I'm reading from verse 31 and verse 32. Surely it is me to be said unto God when you see the Lord, when you hear the Lord, when you perceive the presence of the Lord, it is right, it is necessary. To say unto the Lord, verse 31, I have borne chastisement. I will not offend any more. That which I see not, teach thou me. When you see the presence of the Lord and you know that he's very near, you are hearing his voice and he's pointing to your heart and then he's bringing that conviction upon you. You're saying, oh Lord, now I understand. Now I understand. I thought everything was all right. I thought I was up there. I thought I was even perfect. But now, Lord, I'm telling you, now that I see the presence of the Lord so near, that which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, what next? I will do no more. If I have done iniquity, I, I didn't know that was wrong, but in your presence now, I can see that was wrong. I didn't know that that was unacceptable. In your presence now, I see that is unacceptable. I didn't know that this will offend you, but now in your presence, I see that that is offensive. And that which I see not teach you me. If I have done iniquity, I will do you no more you know it is when you see that presence of the lord and it says i'm now with you i will never leave you i'll never forsake you and the spirit of god impresses that on your heart that's when you are telling the lord oh lord i need poaching i need cleansing i need purifying in second chronicles chapter 15 second chronicles chapter 15 from verse 1 and the spirit of god came upon azariah the son of Odid and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him hear ye me Asa and, I, and all Judah and Benjamin the Lord is with you what an information what an info, what a revelation that the, this man of God gave unto Asa if that's all I can tell you that the Lord is with you I've told you something I said I've told you something you know you thought Satan was with you I said no the Lord is with you you thought the enemies are too near i said no the lord is with you. you you thought my problems they keep close to me like my clothes i said no the lord is with you i came here to tell you tonight the lord is with you you know you can dry your tears and forget your sorrows and forget all those problems and forget all your heartaches and you know dropping your head as if you know the whole world is falling on you because i came to tell you because god told me to tell you that the lord is with you 
it will never leave you it will never forsake you and because of that presence of the lord with you you can do virtually anything for the lord there's no assignment too great for you there's no challenge too great for you you know all the all the thoughts have been having and all the devil has been whispering to you and he's saying ah you have lost the lord the lord has lost, lost you you're not far away from the lord the devil is a liar because the lord said i am with you he will never leave you he will never forsake you you are going to find these days we are together that when you open your mouth like this and you ask for anything test it test it you're going to discover the lord will say yes i'm going to show you i love you i'm with you he'll give it unto you and so this man of god told isa in this verse 2 and he said the lord is with you while ye be with him if you seek him he will be found he will be found of you if ye forsake him i'll never forsake him if ye forsake him he will forsake you now for a long time a long season israel has been without the true god and without a teaching priest and without the law but when they in their trouble did turn unto the lord god of israel and sought him he was found of them and then we're told in verse 7 be you strong therefore and let not your hands be weak for your for your work shall be rewarded your work will be rewarded and when Asa heard these words and the, pro and the prophecy of Odech, the prophet, he took courage. Take courage. I said, take courage. I said, take courage. Look up here. I want you to look at the person beside you. Now, those who are beside one, that just one person, two together. Are you all right? You understand? Okay. Take is biro. Just take biro. Have you done that? Okay, the other person, take it back. Have you done that? Take courage. Praise the Lord. You know some people, you know what they do? When the Lord said, take courage. They go there, they kneel down, they're shaking their head, they're doing this. Oh God, courage. Oh God, courage. Take courage. It's there. Take it. I said it's there. Take it. You know, that's what the Lord is saying. He said this year, there's no discouragement. This year, there's no depression. Anytime discouragement is trying to come, discouragement, then what do you do? I didn't hear you. You take it. When you take it, it's yours already. You are going to be courageous in Jesus' name. When you hear the prophecy of the word, when you hear the promise of the word of the promise is there to remind you, you have no reason sitting down there and crying. You have no reason sitting down there and mourning. And the thing, the thing is there very near you. And it says, What? Take it up, take courage. And we're told Asa did what? is a true courage and he put away the abominable idols out of the land of judah and benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from mount ephraim and renewed the altar of the lord and was that was before the porch of the lord now that's what he did that's what he did when he saw that perception when he had that perception of the presence of the lord was him he said i don't have any reason sitting back down there and you know mourning and crying and being sorrowful as if something bad has happened that cannot be you know kind of reorganized and changed therefore he took courage and then he went for a cleansing that's what the lord is saying when you have that perceived presence of the lord you take courage and there should be cleansing the purging that we have in his perceived presence malachi we're looking at chapter 3 from verse 1 behold i will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me and the lord whom you seek shall suddenly come in his temple the lord whom you seek shall suddenly come in his temple when you have that perception of his coming 
of his presence and of his nearness with you it says even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in behold he shall come says the lord of hosts and then in verse 2 but who shall abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth for he is like a refiner's fire and like the fuller soul and he shall sage as a refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver it says that when he comes in his presence and then you sense and you perceive that that presence of the, of the lord is there it will purify and refine you so that that ye may offer unto the lord an offering in righteousness it will happen in jesus name point number three now the purpose of his perpetual presence the purpose of his perpetual presence the lord said he'll be with you he'll be with me he'll be with us he will be with this church every church named deeper life in anywhere any corner of the world any village any local government any region any state deeper life in any country of africa beyond africa the lord will be with us this year you'll see the presence of the lord this year you experience the presence of the lord and when that presence is there impossibilities will become possible now the purpose of his perpetual presence exodus chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 10 exodus 3 verse 10 come now therefore and i will send thee unto pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people the children of israel out of egypt and moses said unto god who am i that i should go unto pharaoh that i should bring forth the children of israel out of egypt and he said certainly without any shadow of doubt i will be with thee when some assignment is given to you and you're asking who am i that i could do that who am i that i can fit into that who am i that i should accomplish that and the lord is saying all you need to be able to do the impossible let me put it another way all you need to do to be able to do the undoable the things that people think you cannot do that no man can do that all you need is the presence of the lord and the lord will be with you it says certainly certainly in verse 12 i will be with thee and they shall be a token unto thee that i have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of egypt you shall serve god upon this mountain what's the purpose of the presence of the lord to be able to bring the people of god out of captivity through your messages through your prayers through your counseling through your interaction through your fellowship many people are going to come out of captivity this year out of their sin many people are going to get saved through you out of their sicknesses many people are going to get healed through you this year in jesus name it says you'll bring the people out of the house of bondage chapter 4 exodus chapter 4 verse 10 and moses said unto the lord oh my lord i am not eloquent neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant but i am slow of speech and of a slow tongue wait there for a moment you know sometimes uh, look up brothers and sisters uh, sometimes we cheat ourselves because we don't understand how god works for example if you listen to a preacher and the preacher is you know talking like it's not talking like you expected you know the way he talks and maybe that's his natural way of talking maybe it's a little bit you know afraid of just a crowd like this and then he talks slow and then he you know is of his slow speech and then of his slow talk some people don't think that anything can happen when somebody is talking like that but anybody who comes here to speak during this congress something good will happen to you he may talk fast he may talk slow he may pronounce some words like you know we pronounce it in other parts of the world not like we pronounce it in nigeria whatever the pronunciation it will send blessing into your life and whatever the way of talking is that's not the important thing god said moses i know the way you talk 
and then you are belittling yourself and you're saying, I cannot speak of a slow speech. You know, sometimes we go to other places and when we go there and we, you know, see the way the people are and they're not familiar with the way we talk, we kind of talk in a way that, you know, we're wondering ourselves, is anything happening there? Is anything happening there? Something is happening there. Anyway, you go just talk the way you want to talk and the way you are given the grace to talk. And I'm telling you, miracles will follow in Jesus' name. And Moses was concerned about that. Moses thought, if I talk this way, if I talk my way, these people are not going to, how can you face Pharaoh and face all the magicians? If a person is talking the way I am talking, how can you have victory? The way you are talking is all right. I said the way you are talking is all right. And the victory and the deliverance will come to the people of God, even through you in Jesus' name. Let me help you. Don't compare yourself with another person. That's why God said, Moses, don't talk like this. I know your brother Aaron is there. I know he can talk more than you, but the power is not there. The power is on you. And, and the Lord okay, if you want him, I give him to you. Let him go with you. And then let's see what will happen. And then Moses, the stammerer, Moses, the slow talker, he went to the mount for only 40 days. By the time he came back, and Aaron was in charge, the good talker, he was in charge. The eloquent talker, he was in charge. The fluent speaker, he was in charge. Before, they came, before he came back, what happened? The fluent talker has raised an idol for the people. And Moses, the one slow of speech, when he came, he said, uh -uh, Aaron, better speaker, what have you done? Or he said, you know what? I couldn't take courage when you went away. The people told me, if you don't raise up an idol for us, you are gone. You know the people now. You are the only one, slow talker, that can handle these people. Me, fast talker, good talker. I only talk. I cannot handle them. Don't compare yourself with Aaron. The way you are talking, that's good for you. And it's good for us, church. I said it's good for us, church. And so it was that Moses with his slow talk that went back to God. And with his speech, his slow talk, he said, God, help these people. Don't destroy them. God says, slow talker, I hear you. I will not destroy them is a slow talker the one that didn't know how to talk that had power with god and power with man power over pharaoh power over the egyptians so whatever gift god has given you don't belittle it accept it the way it is it will work miracle yeah. and so here we are told that he was saying i'm of a slow speech and of a slow tongue and the lord said unto him who has made man's mouth or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind, have not I the Lord? Now therefore, go. Stop belittling yourself. Do what? Go. Stop complaining. Do what? Go. And stop saying, I cannot. You can, you will, you must. Go. Now therefore, go. I will be with thy mouth. That's all I need. That's all you need. That's all we need. I will be with your mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. Give me a good amen. amen. The reason why the Lord is going to be with us is that he's sending us to the people. And when we get to the people, we will say what the Lord has told us to say. I'm coming back to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. And I'm reading there from verse... I'm reading from verse... 19 to verse 20. Matthew chapter 28, we're looking at verse 19 and we're looking at uh, verse uh, 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. He is with me always. He is with me always. Say that. He is with me always. Until the end of the world. Amen. We told you already, our camp commandant already told you that this is uh, a congress for Don. D-A-W-N. Discipling a whole nation. 
discipling D A that's A whole that's W nation that's N that's done and that's what we're going to look at now as we look at verse 19 go ye therefore into all nations that's the end there baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and teaching them that's the discipleship thing you're discipling them you're discipling them and it's the whole nation that you're doing that to if you're coming from this nation the vision that we ministers have in this nation is to disciple a whole nation that's done and if you're coming from any other country the what you have the project we have the assignment we have the commitment the commission we have is to disciple a whole nation and it's a new dawn dawn means daybreak dawn means light breaking forth dawn means that all the darkness is gone and the light of the gospel is coming dawn we say the dawn of civilization the dawn of evangelization the dawn of revelation the dawn of new situation a dawn darkness is gone and light has come and this is what we're about this new year and the question is how will the dawn discipling the whole nation how will it take place number one d-a-w-n demonstrate a watchman's nature that's done if you're going to see the dawn if we're going to see the discipling of this whole nation you and i you and him you and her we must demonstrate a watchman's nature let's look at ezekiel ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17 son of man i have made thee a watchman unto the house of israel therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me go out of the congress when we finish and go and demonstrate a watchman's nature number two develop a witnessing network the work of develop of a discipline a whole nation is so much that you alone in isolation you cannot do it you need all the witnesses and you need all the soul winners and you need all the believers to join hands and hearts together and go forth and get it done and so if we're going to actually disciple a whole nation you will develop that's d a that's a witnessing that's double you network developing a witnessing network ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers those are the leaders those are the ministers those are the pastors those are the preachers those are the people on the go apostle and prophet and evangelist and pastor and teacher why for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ all the saints all the children of god all the believers you get them together into a network and you develop them you edify them you train them you equip them and then you enlist them and roll them and send them forth if we're going to disciple this whole nation and if you're going to disciple the nation that you come from if you're going to bring them to the lord and if they're going to stay and stick with the lord you need number one to them straight a watchman's nature number two to develop a witnessing network number three detest all willful negligence detest hate abhor and count as refuse detest disclaim reject disclaim all willful negligence you know if we're going to disciple a whole nation uh, there will be no toleration for negligence you know we're calling for evangelism and you ought to reach out and i ought to reach out everybody ought to reach out and there are some people that are willfully negligent and then you just say well what if you want to you can join us if you don't want you may still sit down there if you tolerate willful negligence there's no way you're going to have all the people that ought to get the work done to cooperate with you you have to detest you have to disclaim all or what willful negligence second chronicles second chronicles i'm looking at chapter 29 second chronicles chapter 29 detest 
all willful negligence. Second Chronicles 29. And we're reading from verse 10 and verse 11. It says, Now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. My sons, be not now negligent my sons be not now negligent here was the king and was saying it's in my heart to commit myself consecrate myself and devote myself to doing the will of god and the will of god is going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and when the lord says go everyone is involved and you're not going to allow someone to just say no that's not my priority no that's not my assignment i am only in this area of work in the church i don't uh, like evangelism you are not going to accept that because you are going to detest and disclaim all kind of a willful negligence that's why it says in verse 11 my sons be not now negligent for the lord has chosen you to stand before him to serve him and that ye should minister unto him you will minister unto him number four discover a waiting neighborhood discover a waiting neighborhood we're talking about dawn d-a-w-n discover a waiting neighborhood that means a community the gospel is not there yet that means uh, a community the church is not planted there yet and we're talking about dawn and you want to discover how do you discover you move around you look at this a church there is there a church there is there a church there we have a million people in that local government and then the church is only one little corner go around and discover a waiting neighborhood we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 16 acts chapter 16 i'm reading to you there from verse 9 acts chapter 16 verse 9 and a vision appeared unto paul in the night there stood a man of macedonia and prayed him saying come over into macedonia and help us there's a neighborhood here paul you have not discovered us we're here there's no gospel here there's no there's no true gospel here there's no true church here and there's no revival here and you are there and you're just sitting down you're wondering where do you go where do you go where am i going to go you try to wait, go into uh, trials tr 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 and there's no place you try to go into be senior and there's no place we're here we are ready come discover a waiting neighborhood that is done and then he says in verse 10 and after he had seen the vision immediately we endeavored to go into macedonia shortly gathering that the lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them number one demonstrate what a watchman's nature number two what's that develop a witnessing network get the people together train them mobilize them and send them out to get the work done number three what's that detest all willful negligence don't trust willful negligence in your church in the local church in the state church in the regional church or in the headquarters church any willful deliberate negligence don't accept that detest a willful or willful negligence what's number four discover a waiting neighborhood number five disregard all worrisome news disregard all worrisome news you know there are people they always say oh something is going on there don't go there a bad thing is happening there don't go there something is happening there don't go there you know in this uh, in, in our land it's like some people they fear witches and wizards and something like that i remember some years ago that uh, they, we, i sent him um, a particular brother from one stage i sent him to another place another state to go and be a region overseer there he had never been a region overseer in his life uh, in deeper life he was just a local pastor there and i saw that the gift of god was upon his life and then as i you know sent him there he was there and he he told me later he couldn't preach because he'll come on the pulpit and then fear will grab him uh, the reason what happened is that when he got to that place you know some people just met him on the way and oh you are the one here now the, the one they sent to this place uh, welcome we are here 
And then he was wondering, what does that mean? We are here. We are here. And then another person, you know, met him and then said, we are here. And then he began to say, what does that mean? And then somebody told him, it means that those powers that will not allow the church to grow there, that they are there. All of a sudden, he became afraid. And then this time, I just wanted to go around. I wasn't preaching. I just, you know, wanted, I felt, I want to go and see all these, my sons and daughters who are here and there. And then I, you know, got to, I don't want to mention the state so that you don't uh, guess where it is. And I called the state over there. I said, come on now. We're going around to all your regions. And he said, uh, Pastor, no publicity. I said, I'm not going to preach. I just want to move around. And then I got to this place and got to this place. And then I got to this particular location. And in that particular location, I just said, how are you? Oh, he said, Pastor, I never experienced so much trouble in my life. I said, what do you mean? He said, I cannot preach. I said, what do you mean? Then he told me, he told me the story. I said, come on now, take me to your church. And then we got to the church and then I didn't preach. I didn't even mention, I didn't cast out anything. I just walked around that church building. And then I came to his pulpit and I stood by his pulpit and I put my Bible on his pulpit. And I said, praise the Lord. And then I left. I said, I have to go to other places. And then after I left, I'm telling you, he came to that pulpit. He began to preach. And you know, the first message he preached after I stood on his pulpit, there was somebody there, one of those uh, people, a pastor of darkness, fell down completely. And then began to cry, and the ushers, you know, took her and took her out. Another one fell, another one fell. By the time they fell and fell like that, you know, miracles began to happen. You know, maybe I'll just come to your place and just, just stand there. Not preach, no crusade, just come and stand on your pulpit. And just walk around when i walk around like that all your jericho walls will fall in jesus name you know you have you have to disregard all worrisome news that is, don't go there don't go there they don't allow the work of god to prosper there the work of god will prosper in your hand we're looking at acts of the apostles acts of the apostles chapter 21 chapter 21 disregard all worrisome news that's done if we're going to have this done and have a breakthrough and break out this is what you are what you are going to do in uh, acts chapter 21 i'm reading from verse 13 and paul, then paul answered what mean ye to weep and to break my heart for i am ready everybody say i'm ready I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we see saying the will of the Lord be done. What did he do? He disregarded all worrisome news. Number six, double a written number double a reaching number they say that this is you know the ushers they do our accounting for us and they say that this is the reaching number for your church this year you're going to double that we want to get survey from you know all the various regions how many churches do you have we have 96 i say this year that reaching number we're going to double that number and then we'll say that in that nation this is the number we have done means d a w n it means double a reaching number that means this year you are looking forward to it some of us will just say each quarter we double some of us are going to say each uh, half of the year we double some of us are going to say for the whole year our target for this year is that we're going to double a reaching number and that means that house fellowships will double. That means local churches will double. That means that all the churches in the whole state, everything will double. Headquarters here, our churches, our districts will double. Double a reaching number. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9, we're looking at verse 31. Then at the churches raised throughout all judea and galilee and samaria and they were edified walking in the fear of the lord and in the comfort of the holy spirit were multiplied multiplication everybody say multiplication now number seven declare apostolic word nationwide declare apostolic words nationwide all over the nation the same doctrine 
the same word and the same belief that we have earnestly contending for the faith was delivered unto the saints we're not going to hear contrary doctrine false doctrine all of us who are here tonight and all of us that will be in this congress from beginning to the end we're going to take this same apostolic message take it everywhere and we're going to declare apostolic word nationally nationwide that's what done means we're looking at acts chapter 2 acts chapter 2 verse 42 and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and then it says and in breaking of bread and in prayers they declared apostolic words nationwide we're looking at chapter 5 acts chapter 5 we're looking at verse 42 and daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach jesus christ that's the word that we're going to declare everywhere that we go and then it also tells us as uh, as we move on that this same word look at chapter 8 verse 4 therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere what were they doing preaching the word the same word that they learned in jerusalem the same word they learned at the headquarters the same word that the apostles gave unto them they declared apostolic words nationwide everywhere they went acts of the apostles chapter 8 verse 14 and philip was found at Azotus, and passing through he preached in all the cities till he came to caesarea he preached in all the cities it wasn't just a hopping and jumping he preached here consistently consistently consi consistently he preached everywhere and we're going to do that in jesus name acts of the apostles chapter 12 verse 24 but the word of the lord grew and multiplied the word of the lord everywhere they went all the believers that's what they were doing this they, they were sticking to the same word the same apostolic word that had given them that is what they all sustained supported and preached acts of the apostles chapter 16 acts chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 4 and as they went through the cities they delivered them the decrees for to keep which were ordained of the apostles and the elders which were jerusalem you see they didn't change it they didn't modify it they didn't try to doctor it and tailor it and make it suit anybody the same apostolic word the same word we're hearing from the pulpit here it says look at that verse 4 again and as they went through the cities all the cities of this nation will preach the word all the cities of this continent will preach the word and it says they delivered them the decrees that's the doctrine for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and of the elders which were jerusalem so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number how daily every day we're going to increase this when we carry out done we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 19 acts chapter 19 we're looking at verse 10 acts chapter 19 verse 10 and this continued by the space of two years so that all they which what which dwelt in asia heard the word of the lord jesus all they all the everybody heard the word of the lord jesus as we are here and the lord has brought us in here to prepare for dawn that is discipling a whole nation we're going to take these apostolic words we're going to take it to everywhere in the nation through you people are going to get converted and through my sisters there we are going to get converted all of us together none of us will be buried spiritually none of us will be fruitless spiritually you'll go and give them this same as possibly forward nationally and different people all over the nation from the top to the bottom from the greatest to the lowest from the educated to the illiterate many people they're going to turn to the lord this year in jesus name because we have the passion and we have the fervency and we have the vision for done everybody say done give me a d a w and done done discipling a whole nation let's rise up commit ourselves to the point and to this thing that we're going to do we're going to disciple this whole nation